What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of That Scuffed Up. Episode 24 coming at you right here, right now, on this beautiful September in the middle of the month. Today, Justin Lee and Stephen Hayden coming with you with another brand new wave of content. Stephen Hayden, how are we doing today? Hello, we're here. We're good. L little little sore today. We'll get more to that in a little bit. Yesterday was a yes. Yesterday was a long was a long day. Uh, actually, I mean, even the the past thirty six hours have been pretty long for me uh, regarding wiffle ball. But uh, you know, we're we're here. We're we're sitting down, so we don't have any physical activity going on right now, which is a uh, which is good things. <laughs> like I said, things have been things have been very busy as you uh, as as you Justin saw part of it on on Saturday. Uh, and I combined with Friday and, and other stuff like that. Uh, beach workouts with baseball finishing up. <laughs> I, I, I needed a little little break today. That's what I'm getting so far uh, by doing this podcast. I think I can do to you on that as well. Uh, the stuff that we did for the, the event yesterday and then doing a football game, carrying a big giant camera rig around and running back and forth across the field to try to get the guy on camera. Uh I'll, I'll say there's a lot of parts of my body that are extremely sore, so gonna need maybe an ice bath or something later, um, or just grab the massage gun and just you know have at it with that. Um, today we got some things going on. We have to talk about week six results. Uh, we are halfway through the season. We've got All Star Game, Home Run Derby coming up very fast. Um, we are close to October, which is Halloween time, baby, and. Uh, Sign-ups for the winter season are already up there on the OCUFL website. Uh, besides that, we will also talk about a little story from yesterday as the day, as this podcast is being recorded. But um, let's start off things off with our Week 6 results, uh, starting off with Division 1. Um, if you have not seen the rankings for... Uh, or your own stats for week six. Everything is updated on the OC Football website every single week. So you can take a look at those. We'll be covering that as we talk about these games. Um, but let's start off with uh, these series of games for Division One. The first ones of the day um, was against the Trash Pandas and the MS Warriors. The MS Warriors are coming off of a loss uh, from a week ago uh, trash pandas coming in here looking to get a good win after dropping a game um they take on ms warriors and ms warriors actually edge out barely against the trash pandas taking this game eight to six in this victory yeah pretty pretty close game here to uh two teams in the top half of the standings in division one uh looks like as on the website as of right now the standings are not updated uh, so, but th these two teams, if I'm not mistaken, they will stay in the in the same spot as they are right now. The MS Warriors are sitting in the in the number two spot. The Trash Pandas will be in the number four uh, after this game. Trash Pandas call, fall to four and four, back at a 500 record. Uh, pr pretty pretty close game overall, right here. Uh, I know it's a good good battle between two very good teams. Trash Pandas Trash Pandas been making some noise so far. Uh, playing a team, playing a team that's only that's only lost to the undefeated Purple Huskies as of right now. Uh, but MS Warriors, with, you know, they they got they have Shaden back on the team. That makes a big difference for them. Uh, lost a couple other guys, but good, good uh, MS Warriors pulled out a a big result. Well, it could possibly be a, pat, a playoff match we st see later in the in the year, whether it be whether it could be a semifinal, could even be a, a, a champion a World Series matchup. It, it, it's, it's also those that top four teams looks like they have a I feel like any four of them will could have a very good shot at making to that World Series. We'll talk more about another top four matchup a little, little later on here. But uh, over, overall, good win for the MS MS Warriors. They move on to six and one, and they're 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 staying right on the right on the tails of the of the Purple Huskies. So we'll see we'll see we'll see, we'll see if this final of the year for the MS Warriors and Dylan Hoffman to be able to break through, get into the World Series, and possibly win one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, MS Warriors are looking to bounce back after losing their undefeated streak, and then the Trash Pandas are just trying to stay, you know, within the middle of the pack in terms of Division One standings. Um, this kind of tells you, you know, how the competitiveness level of the Trash Pandas has really caught up to a degree where they can compete with a lot of these really big teams. Um, obviously, they were really close in this game, but they just didn't have enough to get through that barrier with the MS Warriors and the Purple Huskies at the very top. Um, 
So look to them to really, you know, make the games competitive and keep them close because they have the ability and the talent to do so. Yeah, and, and one thing that is a little boring for now, right now uh, the MS Warriors pitching has not been as solid as it's been in the past, especially Dylan Hoffman, uh, the back-to-back Cy Young Award winner. Uh, last, last season had uh, four, like 48 innings pitched with a 2 ERA. So far this year, uh, through 25 and two-thirds innings pitch is at a is at a 3.98 ERA. Does I mean still has a big number of strikeouts? Got 59 strikeouts, but in in 25 and two-thirds innings has allowed 17 runs so far. That could be something to watch more for the future. It seems like you know they play more Division One teams. More pe- teams are able to get around to that pitch and be able to see it. I know I know in our matchup when we played that we were able to get uh, three runs off Dylan in the first inning. Uh, whether it was down to rust or or whatever that was with the situation, uh, it, who who knows? But it, it looks it looks like getting Shane back has been a big difference for them. Hitting 447 right now with a 618 odd base percentage, and pitching wise, he's got a th- he's actually got a lower ERA than Dylan uh, with a 350 ERA, uh, tw- less innings pitch, only got 12 innings pitch, we've got 23 strikeouts, and only allowed seven runs so far on the season. Getting Shane, Shane, getting Shane back really, really, really elevates this team up another level, uh, even even higher than uh, Kyle and Joey on the team combined. Just really having that, that even that that big that big bat at the at the play, one of the one of the best hitters so far of this uh, in the league in Division One this year. And then pitching wise, he's he's been he's been very good as well. And they've and they've got a very good defense behind them. A lot of young guys, uh, guys like Nathan Beckley out there able to. Uh, able to run down, run down balls if uh, hit down for a home run and stuff like that. So, uh, we'll, we'll, the MS Warriors have had a couple of scares, including this one here. But we'll see how they continue on moving into into the future, uh, where I, where I believe for for next uh, for this coming week, uh, they they have they have one they have one game this coming week against. I'm trying to I'm trying to find they got the they got the Avocabro, so they're gonna have to make sure try to keep the Avocabro scoring to a low roar as the Avocabros do love to score a lot of runs. Yeah, definitely. That's the game that we're going to have to keep an eye out for. And, um, you know, for Nathan Beckley, who's got baseball experience, like he's got the ability to jump on the ball. So keep an eye out for him. Yeah, uh, Going to be that kind of X-factor player for the most part for that team as well. Anyways, moving on to the next game, which is between the uh, Shepherd's Pie and the L.A. Wiffles of O.C. Uh, this was a game that was uh, interesting. This is the first matchup between these two teams this season. Uh, typically, every team will most likely play each other at least twice. Uh, but this was the first matchup between the L.A. Wiffles of O.C. and the Shepherd's Pie. L.A. Wiffles of O.C. take this one 7-2 to against the Shepherd's Pie's team. And they drop another game this season, which uh, puts them in an awkward position uh, in the standings currently. But LA Wolves OC coming back, trying to get some easy, trying to get some simple wins to kind of keep in the the top part of the standing. Now, it's, the first couple of innings, this game was pretty close. Anthony Grusi with a solo home run, backed up by Dylan Menji for the LA Wolves OC, getting a solo home run. The third inning is where things kind of started breaking off here. Uh, when when the uh, when when tra- the uh, oh wow the shepherd's shepherd's pie went to their second pitcher in Evan White and uh, Stephen Hayden hit hit a, a grand slam off of him make it a five one game and then after that they were just able, able to get a couple more runs across Anthony did hit another home run in the fifth inning I want to say uh, on a on a ball I should have caught but I I misread uh, it, it happens uh, but. Oh, we're st- still able to get the win. Uh, Dustin Staggs and uh, Greg Gualtieri is pitching great on the mound. Beach pitching three innings each, only allowing one solo home run to Anthony each. Uh, good, good number of strikeouts in there as well. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how many strikeouts they had for the game, but uh, Dustin, Dustin Staggs has really been really been improving on the, on the mound lately as well. Uh, up after, after, that, after that unfortunate performance for his MS Warriors, uh, he, he's really he's really picked it up lately, pitching pitching well, getting four scoreless innings versus the Trash Pandas, and then through three innings of one run game uh, for one run game here with a uh, got a 4.29 ERA, 14 innings pitch only allowed 10 runs. He's got 30 strikeouts as well, uh, so he's he's Dustin's getting a lot of strikeouts here. 
Uh, he's getting get, getting some defense in when he's needed, but mainly just working a lot of strikeouts. Not quite the, the quite not quite the ERA he has in SoCal with football, but he's still getting used to this. Uh, I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot more improvements uh, from him. Uh, might might be more of a might be more of an option we use for pitching as well uh, going into the future. But uh, let's we'll move on to five and three, and uh, I got a big matchup coming up next. We'll talk about a little later. Yeah, definitely. This is. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, a little later. A little later, okay. Just making sure. Um, anyways, yeah, for Ellie with the OC, this was a pretty good win for them. Um, trying to stay close, you know, with those top two contenders in the Purple Huskies and the MS Warriors. Probably hoping that Trash Mendes would come away with the win against MS Warriors to help them out a little bit. But obviously, that wasn't the case, as we talked about earlier. Uh, so Ellie with the OC do get the win, though, so that helps them a little bit. Um, but good scenario for them for their team as well um and then the compadres which we'll get to here in a second um had an interesting day for themselves um they're coming off of a of a a game where they nearly took down an undefeated team uh, just weren't able to make it away with it this time they get to play another really good team in the purple huskies um the OC Wiffles of LA is the team I'm talking about, of course. Uh, Purple Huskies take this win 5-1. to one. Uh, Fairly, fairly low-scoring affair, but not enough for the OC Wiffles of LA to keep up. Yeah, big thing big thing uh, for Purple Huskies. They were missing True Hendrickson for their two games today, so that's important to keep in mind. But they did still have Drake Hoffman. They still had Joey Potter to pitch on the mound. Uh, Pro Plus, he's actually scored all the five of their runs in the first in the first inning against James. Uh, he's had a very good season for OC with as well, even if the team results haven't haven't quite been there yet. But able to get five runs quickly off the board, and that kind of I kind of set the pace for them uh, in, ter- in terms of just getting off the board and be able to get off to a good start. OC with as well, did do a good job the rest of the game, um, keep keeping it close, but just not able to get the get the timely hit or get the runs in when they needed to. So Purple Huskies move on to six and zero. Uh, they play their play their play the get the LA Wolfles next t- team next so that they get getting off to that big start versus OC kind of let them relax a little bit. We'll see how they uh, we'll talk in just a just a second how the matchup went, but uh, but for for, for, for oh, it's it's one of those <laughs> again OC Wolfles of LA are right in it. Um, they their their run difference is extremely low. They only lose by four runs there, but they're they're in every single game, just not able to. Uh, get over the hump and get that first win. Yeah, the story of, of you know their team is just you know being able to finish those games. It, it's tough when you have a really good pitcher in James Lee, and then you're not able to finish with the you know secondary guys like Ethan Lee and the Kuroz brother or son and father and son I should say. Um, and then you know they're not they're missing a guy in Joaquin Jimenez who was expected to be that kind of secondary guy. Uh, you know, compliment James Lee uh, as a relief pitcher or, you know, switching off with each other, but it just hasn't really been shown there. So they, they've been keeping these games very close, but um, the numbers don't lie. They're in almost every single game. They just haven't been able to get over that hump and get their first victory of the year. And uh, we'll talk about it in a second. Like they talk about like these this team being in these games every often. Uh, the next game because they're running through a double header on the schedule is <laughs> really really close. And and uh, again, you know the finish that they that they got is unfortunate for you know their team. Uh, unfortunate though is the other matchup that um, for the LA Wilson OC. Um, this was against you know the undefeated team. Um, that just defeated the OC Wolves of LA. The Purple Huskies taking on the LA Wolves of OC. This was the big matchup, and um, I guess Joey Ponder does live in the head of Justin Lee. So unfortunately, that is the storyline that was uh, being paid attention to. Uh, got a glizzy thrown in the middle of a pitch, <laughs> which is a little weird. Um, anyways. Eliosa OC versus Purple Huskies. This game was very, very close. There was really good pitching all around, um, but the Purple Huskies come out on top, two to one in this game. But a good sign for the Eliosa OC. All right, that's enough about this game. We got the next game coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this, 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 this is a, it's a very, a very tight game overall. I got, like I said before, Purple Huskies were missing True Hendrickson, uh, for the Eliosa OC. I thought we were going to be missing Jordan Dreschler. 
He was gone for our game versus Shepherd's Pie, but was able to make it in time for the Purple Huskies game. Uh, so we had our full six, uh, whereas Purple Huskies were actually down two players. They're also missing. Uh, they, were, they were missing True Hendricks, and they were also missing Tyler Gold. Uh, so they had reserve player uh, Justin Mondini in there, who also, who similar to Nathan Beckley, also played on the on the SoCal Mavericks with me this summer, uh, coached by Dylan and Drake uh, during the summer. So uh, they, they 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 still had they still had Fru- they still had Kyle Froome, they still had Ponder, they still had Drake, and, and then they had Justin Mondini with them. Uh, very 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 interesting events right away. Uh, I, there, there was a base hit. I I thought I, I thought was clearly a single that got uh, I got I got robbed of in my opinion. And then uh, two outs for after that it was like supposedly two outs first inning. Uh, Jordan sends one to center field and Justin Mondini. I'm not sure how he caught the ball given the fact he's not he hasn't played a ton of football in his life or it was it was first week out here he was able to make. He was able. To, he was able to sprint out to the outfield and make a, make a great catch in the outfield to keep it a zero zero ball game. Just a lot of lot of battling going on bet- uh, between pitch uh, between the pitchers. Not a whole lot of base runners getting on uh, getting on for either team uh, until until the third inning. Uh, Kyle Froome sends a sends a home run to center field. Uh, may, may, maybe should have been caught, uh, but it was not. Uh, we did have <laughs> Dustin. Unfortunately, did forget his uh, his his normal wolf ball shoes, his turf shoes on the on the day. So he's out there wearing his work boots. That might have slowed him down a little bit, uh, especially in the outfield trying to make trying to make a catch. But uh, they make it a one zero game. And uh, overall, overall, no, no one was really really getting on base too much, except for Steven, who. Uh, in the in the fifth inning, with uh, with two outs and with uh, two outs two uh, two outs in either, uh, it was the fourth or the fifth. Uh, I, 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 it was yeah, it was the it was the two outs in the fourth inning. Uh, hit, hit a solo home run to make it a one to one ball game off of jo- uh, first pitch seen off of Joey Ponder in the at bat with two outs. Uh, and then then b- bottom of the sixth, other was supposed to see. Have runner on second base after a Jordan double with two outs, and uh, Justin Lee pops up for the third out of the inning. Uh, actually, it should, it should be mentioned this. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about one about the the Joey Ponder and, and Justin situation in a minute. But uh, b- bottom bottom of the sixth inning, trash pan. I mean, Purple Huskies have a chance to win it here. Uh, get a big victory in the, in the number one, number three matchup. Uh, Joey Ponder on a full count. It's a line drive. Just happens to go straight at me for the first out. Uh, and then Drake Drake Hoffman steps up to the plate. Uh, set one zero count. Second pitch he sees. Uh, he, he gets he gets he t- puts a swing on it on a slider. Gets jammed on it. Uh, I, I thought I, it looked like it nearly hit his hands. <laughs> how far it was on the bat, but he, even he said he got none of the barrel on the bat at all. Uh, and just barely traveled over the cones. Dustin unable to, with with the working boots on again. Uh, just unable to make the catch. And the Purple Huskies walk that one off two to one. And then what was a uh, what was it? What was a very good game? A, 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 it was an intense game, but it was also a very fun game out there. Uh, but unfortunately, I gave up a walk off home run to Drake Hoffman, and they come away with a two to one victory. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you talk about this game in essence. You know, the type of matchup that is probably likely what we're going to see in the playoffs. Um, you know. Ellie will OC, this won't be the, the last time they see the Purple Huskies, obviously. I'm sure they'll see them plenty of times down the road. They're just trying to keep up with uh, a team like that. You know, a lot of their offense hasn't really been kicking in the gear, minus, you know, Stephen Hayden. Jordan Drexler has some flashes, and and uh, Dustin does have his, his moments as well. Um, it's just, uh, you know, the veteran players like Dylan Menji and then myself have not been, you know, coming through. Greg has been doing pretty good in terms of pitching for some – uh, at some moments of the game, the hitting wise um, has been kind of in a small slump so far. Um, but you know, at some point, something will kick in the gear. Uh, who knows when it'll come? How late it will be? But um, you know, it's a it's an aggressive hitting team. Uh, maybe just trying to buy it off a little too much on on some certain pitches. But um, just have to stay calm, dial in when they need to, and and try to ride the wave of the you know the fantastic pitching talent that they have back there you know Stephen Hayden Dustin Greg 
uh, Jordan. They've got some really good experience um, in this league, and they know how to you know keep teams at bay. Obviously, you know keeping a team all the way till the end, and then you know unfortunately a walk off home run jam um, at the very end. So yeah, yeah it, it, it was it was a game the LA Wolfles they probably should have won earlier on. Uh, it was it just we had we had multiple times we had runners on base runners in scoring position just couldn't get a couldn't get the hit a good couldn't get the correct guy on uh, in terms of in terms of base runners we'll, we'll see uh, Steven got on three times uh, whereas compared and had three hits whereas th- uh, the other five players on the list we'll see they had combined they had two walks and a hit uh, so. Th- the, so two through six of the order got on as many times as Steven did. Uh, that's, that's not a great sign for winning wiffle ball, but um, like just just a little bit of that gets switched around. Things could be very different, but uh, Steven still has. I, mean, I say I keep saying Steven like I'm not Steven, but <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying I'm, try, I'm trying to I'm trying to act like I'm not him, uh, but I but I am him. Uh, Steven off to, off to a, once again the MVP once again off to a great start, hitting wise, leading Division One in average in on, and on base percentage with a 561 average and a 654 on base percentage. Uh, but a, after that, it does kind of fall like this for their team does kind of fall off there. Jordan's Jordan Dressler is not quite having the same numbers as he was last year. Uh, in the summer, he was hitting he was like 550, 560 somewhere around there. Uh, pop pop. Probably should have won a, an award for the summer for hitting, uh, but so far is hitting 269 with a 321 on base percentage. Uh, it's just it's just very different from what we've seen uh, in the past with him. Uh, Dustin Stagg's doing doing great getting on base. He's, uh, he does have a 588 on base percentage. Uh, but I, th- I think for the we'll see it's going to just be about just finding more ways to get on base, not trying to be too aggressive and just be be more willing to walk. Uh, this team, this team overall uh, has 51 walks in total. Uh, when you compare that to, to teams like uh, the Avocados, who have 78 walks as a team, MS Warriors have 72 walks as a team, uh, and 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 just, and just like that. So uh, it's, it's, this this team, as I mentioned, this team that that little Swissy does have the pitching talent. They have uh, four guys who have who have pitched a lot in this league. It may, maybe they have five with with Justin. Now we'll talk more about Justin's pitching a, l- a little later on in the in the podcast. But uh, they they got the great pitching talent to keep it to a low scoring game. It's just unfortunate because n- n- neither Drake or Kyle hit the ball super hard out of the park. It didn't go super far, uh, but it just went to a bad spot and. Uh, uh, Dustin was the closest one to each one uh, with the working boots, just un- unable to make a, a catch on either one of those. But a great battle, Purple Huskies. Uh, as this was talked about on the field, uh, they have they have not lost a game since that. Uh, Drake has not lost a regular season game since he's added True to their lineup. Uh, still able to get two regular season w- wins here without True. Uh, they're trying to avenge for their World Series loss last year. To the Beach City Bombers, who have well, we'll talk about just a minute. Have fallen down the standings so far this year, uh, but this, as as you said, uh, that this could be, this could be a, a potential World Series matchup or uh, semifinals matchup that we see here between the Elwood C and Purple Huskies. Uh, I got to see about the seeding, but uh, that that could definitely be something we see. Right, and we talked about the one seed, you know, having struggles in the playoffs. And not being able to win a championship in itself, who knows if that'll keep up um, as it is. So it's still, you know, we're still a ways from playoff time. So um, that's just something we have to keep an eye on. Who knows if Purple Huskies swap places with the MS Warriors at some point? They've already played each other uh, once this season. So um, if we get to see them later down in the regular season before the playoffs happen, who knows? Maybe something can flip around pretty fast and quickly. So. Oh, yeah, which which these these two teams will play again uh, on October third. Uh, so not this week, but the next week. So we we will see this matchup again. Very interesting to see how this goes. But uh, I, I did I what well, I did want to ask you about the the man that you're paying to live in your head. Uh, what 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 were you what were your thoughts when you were what was it the the fifth the fifth inning? Uh, you're going against Joey Potter. And and you you don't see a wolf ball flying towards you for uh, for the first pitch. 
thought he picked up something off the ground or something that he just like threw like a piece of dirt but then saw this like flopping thing in the middle of the air and then like hit the zone i was like it's like oh okay that was a sausage <laughs> <laughs> you didn't really you didn't really react to it too much you kind of just sat there and just looked at it uh I, I was waiting for i was waiting to see a little bit more reaction but that was uh that was something joey and i had, had, had joked about as a possibility since uh uh since the the stuff i've or so since you started letting him live in your head um but but yeah but yeah that's that's something we talked about. I I kind of reminded him right before right before we got to the field, and luckily he had he had a hot dog on him and was. <laughs> I, I wish I would have. I, I forgot to record that moment. I, I didn't even. I thought he was going to do it like earlier in the game. Yeah. So so the the original plan was to have you be the leadoff hitter for the game. Oh. And for him to start for them, just so he can do that to you first pitch of the game. Oh. Uh, and uh, Drake said no, and Drake Drake didn't want that to happen. Uh, so we had to wait till the fifth inning to get our moment, and I unfortunately did not have anyone. I forgot to record that, and no one else was recording that at the time. Yeah. Uh, so, so we we nothing nothing was able to happen there, but uh, that that is that is what that is what happened. Uh, actually, I, yeah, I'll leave right after. I think like the first pitch next, day, I think you got out, and then I eventually by hitting a by hitting a home run off of him. So. Yeah. I mean, it was a frustrating night. Um, just hit. I did get a few like batted balls into the field they just went to areas where the defense was and then hit one that felt good off the bat but just didn't carry enough over uh left field and it was caught um out in the outfield so not much you can do you just try to get as much many hits as you can and um just try to get back out there key in and just play simple ball or yeah, make some adjustments you know i got the had this weekend to kind of think about that a little bit um and then the tournament too kind of helped a little bit which we'll talk about a little bit later but um yeah that's just that's just where the story is right now so yeah the, the whole we'll still so see i think they, they have some stuff they can work on uh pitch, pitching wise i'll also see are, are right there as a team with a 472 era uh and I, my my numbers are a little bit higher this year so far. With a, I got a three fifty five ERA, twenty and a third innings pitched, uh, with twelve runs around. Still have thirty nine strikeouts, but not quite not quite the same numbers as I had last year. Last year I, I probably I was probably the Cy Young favorite if I wasn't the MVP if I wasn't the MVP favorite mm-hmm. uh, with a one point nine ERA. But uh, Dustin Dustin's getting back in there. Greg was a, with a three uh, three thirty three ERA, and then we'll see more of, jo- of Jordan as well. Um, I, I, Dustin was doing good, and I was doing good. And I kind of, I kind, I kind of forgot about Jordan. I've talked to him about that already. So uh, we'll see more of Jordan as well. We'll see more of a of a mixture of these guys. Definitely. Well, let's get to our next game uh, between the OC Wolfs of LA and the Beach City Bombers. Like I said before. No, let's not do that, Nat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Anyways, so the OC Wolfs of LA versus Beach City Bombers. Um, like I said before, these this game was very, very close and. Shows you why you know OC Wolves of LA are able to stay keyed into these games. Um, Beach City Bombers come out with a victory against the OC Wolves of LA, winning it six to five. Yeah, I mean things things were let off with a uh, with with lead off home. I think there's video on the uh, Beach City's page with a lead off homer by Tyler Moore starting things off off of James Lee. Uh, but but very very close game overall, and as I, I I wish we didn't have to keep talking about how unlucky OC Wolfles are, but I think I think after now they they're they're zero and eight with a minus twenty one run differential, so they're they're on average they're at, they're they're losing each game by uh, by less than three runs. It's just they they've been right there. You know maybe if Joaquin was there, it'd be a different story. He had a, he had a good hitting start to week one, uh, but just so, uh, I think yeah, I think he had like a six sixty seven average. The first week, but hasn't been back. But hasn't been back since due to injuries and other commitments and stuff like that. Uh, but for uh, but but for the Beach City Beach City Bombers, is a, this is a, this, this was a, a, need, a much needed win for them. Uh, they they they've had a little bit of a struggle coming coming off the World Series. You know, things switching to D one. Uh, they came into today as the sixth seed. I believe after this game, they'll they'll now move to the five seed. Uh, being three and four, 
uh, just a half game behind the Trash Pandas. So Beach City Bombers looking to start making their move. And uh, for, for this for this coming week, uh, they they do have they, they do have the Purple Huskies. So we're getting another World Series re rematch. Uh, Purple Huskies won that one 11 to zero the first time around. Uh, so we'll see if Beach City Bombers are able to get anything going here. But uh, they're they're, they're looking they're looking to try to keep themselves in that playoff hunt. Uh, first six seeds for Division One will make the playoffs. That will be the that will be the same playoff formats as the past. Uh, we have the top six making it, and then three plays to six, four plays to five, and then uh, moving on to the one play the one and two seed stuff like that. Uh, so for, for Beach City Bombers, they're looking to keep themselves in there. Uh, those for OC Wolfles, it, it looks it's not looking very likely they'll make the playoffs. They they have the talent to make it to the playoffs. I mean, James is having a having a phenomenal year. Uh, twenty eight and a third innings pitched. He has a four forty five ERA with fifty two strikeouts. And then hit, hitting wise, he's doing very well as well. He's got a 457 average with a 568 on base percentage, uh, five home runs, 16 hits so far on the year, uh, with with uh, with nine walks as well. So he's not walking a whole lot in his at bats, but it it just is not quite able to get over the hump so far uh, and get that win. But uh, Beach City Bomb is looking to. Keep themselves in that playoff hunt. They move above Shepherd's Pie and they sit above uh, Shepherd's Pie, the Avocados, and OC Wolf's of LA as of right now. But uh, so we'll see if they're. We'll, uh, that that's not that's not an easy matchup if you if you uh, to get uh, for that four or five matchup. Right now they would be playing the Trash Pandas in the first round, which would be a match a rematch of the semifinals last year on that side, uh, where the Trash Pandas were the two seed. I mean, sorry, the, the Beach City Bombers are the two seed, and the Trash Pandas uh, won the three six matchup as the six seed. So, uh, it, it, it's it's going to be it's going to be an interesting race to uh, to figure out that 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 four through six seed who's going to make it into those last spots, and then even at that point, you still got to play teams like Purple Huskies and MS Warriors if you win that first game. So, uh, even though we'll we'll see are, are very tough in that three spot, so that six seed is going to have to play them first. Uh, whether that be like the Avocados, Shepherd's Pie, or Wolves of LA, who knows? Uh, but that, that that's going to be that, as we come down to the last three weeks of the season. That's going to be interesting to see for the for the playoff implications. Right, and so you know, for the Beach City Bombers, very interesting this year. You know, uh, coming off of a World Series win, uh, you know, they came in here with a lot of expectations. They just haven't been able to really establish themselves yet. Maybe it's the competition. Maybe it's um, certain aspects we didn't see tyler moore show up um and then zach moore was absent for a few games at the beginning of the season but um you know they, they've they've tried been just trying to figure out how to hang on in the standings trying to figure out how to win games um this was a very good win for them um you know they're playing against a really good pitcher in james lee um but once you get that second pitcher like we said before it's extremely tough to get out of that slump if your second pitcher isn't as solid as your first so for beat city bombers is a good look for them to, uh, look because now they have a chance to try to bounce back and climb the rankings a little bit um so they still have got a shot to do it uh would be interesting to see how things end up down the road yeah you know, we're coming down to that that last stretch uh, you know, it could be a situation where you see that five or six seed have a losing of a uh, of a uh, five hundred record or a negative record, and uh, but that with, with the with teams like this, you, uh, you never know how things are going to go in the playoffs. Um, I mean, Trash Pandas at one point last year they were the uh, I believe they're like one and six or one and seven, and they were the out of twelve teams they were number twelve. Ended up working their way to the number six seed, beating the number three seed, and making it to the semifinals uh, to play on that next Monday. Uh, so things, things, things can turn around. But, uh, well, we'll see LA. It might be a little too late for them, but uh, they, 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 have, they have the talent. They're, they're figuring things out. Uh, but it could be more of a battle for that 5-6 seed between uh, teams like Shepherd's Pie, Beach City Barbers, and Avocabros. But uh, we'll talk about the Avocabros uh, just about right now, I think. Let's do it. Yeah, Avocabros taking on Shepherd's Pie. Uh, this is a fight to kind of stay 
close, somewhat close to the middle of the um, middle pack of the standings. Uh, Avocados, obviously, we know, you know, they put up a lot of runs, and exactly that's what they did. Uh, put 11 runs up on the board against Shepherd's Pie, who do lose in this game with the final score being 11 to seven. Yeah, yeah, Avocado was able to get uh, able to get a, a, a good win here. Uh, you know, they came in. They came in here today as the seventh seed. Uh, I believe, as of right now, they'll be the sixth seed. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I think Beachy Bombers will be five. I mean, the Beachy Bombers will be five. Avocado will be six, and Shepherd's Power will be seven. Down at two and six. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I believe. I believe that's what the situation is. Uh First time we've seen we've seen the Avocados on this on the schedule today. As for Shepherd Spiders, their second loss in a row. Uh, the second time, the second time these two teams have actually played together. First time in and off on a walk off grand slam by the Avocados. Uh, this t- this time, uh, Avocados was able to get the job done. And Shepherd Spiders just unable to get over the, get over that hurdle and be uh, be able to beat them. But uh, only allowing seven, allowing seven runs looks 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 a little bit better than what we've seen in the past from the Avocados. Uh, as they've as they've given up the most runs uh, out of anyone so far in Division One by by, by by a good amount as well. Uh, but we'll we'll see how things how things look. You know, they're one of that te- those teams fighting to be in that battle for the playoffs. They were the the five seed last year and uh, lost the MS Warriors. So we'll see if they're able to get in that playoffs, whether it be that five or six spots or, I mean, look, like one of these three teams is going to have to be knocked out. Uh, so we'll, we'll see which, we'll see which one of uh, which one of them is. And then we'll figure out the matchups for the, for the playoffs and things like that. Yeah, definitely. So we come to the end here of division one for week six. We're coming close to the very end here. And when, you know, we're talking about these teams, Avocados obviously come off of that huge walk off grand slam. Like you just said, against Shepard spy, um, this, both of these teams are, um, with the expectations unfolding here, you know, they're looking to, you know, making a playoff appearance. We saw Avocados make their first appearance last year, uh, during the summer. And, um, you know, they, they're trying to figure out ways to kind of, win games and and figure out that pitching a little bit which has always been that that issue for them but um they know how to pull games out of the water if they need to with the offense going and then obviously shepherd spy has some really really good talent new players this year they were running two new guys um just to see you know kind of where they're at um in terms of but look they looked uh not too bad um so both of these teams, I, um, they do have a definitive shot to take like a, a, a wild card spot and give themselves a chance. It's just a matter of, you know, how are they going to push that second gear into 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 motion and, and really set themselves up for success? Yeah, it's just going to be a matter of whether, whether they do it or not. Uh, for teams like Beach City Bombers, I, I, think, I don't think they would have expected themselves to be in this situation. Uh, you have teams like Beach City Bombers, Shepherd's Pie, and Avocados. Uh, they're all fighting. You have know, three teams really. I mean, OC Wiffles are in there as well technically, but uh, they are they are two games behind right now with uh, with like four games left that they got to play. So it, it's possible. It's not as likely, but we have these four teams battling for these final two spots, and and who knows what could happen with the Trash Pandas? I I don't see them. I don't see them falling out of that fourth spot in my opinion, but. Uh, you never, you never know what the, you never know what may happen with a team like that. Uh, you know, they get uh, trash, trash pandas. They take on, uh, they take on Shepherd's Pie next week. If I mean, Shepherd's Pie shocked Beach City Bombers and was able to get a, a big victory over them the, the previous week, uh, who, who knows who knows what trash pandas uh, what will happen to them? But they, well, Mo, Mo's getting back uh, back better. It seems like he's getting back uh, used to wiffle ball more as he's been gone, was gone for the first few weeks. Uh, we, we just got to see what we just got to see what happens as we get down to the end of the season. If will the will the Beach City Bombers make a co- come back and try to go for a back to back title? Something we haven't seen since uh, the summer twenty twenty two, when when uh, we had uh, the the, tra- the, uh, the Trailer Park Boys do that back to back and things like that. We've had we've had some different winners uh, lately, so we'll see if anyone's able to. Uh, we'll, we'll see who's able to come out on top here, but it's going to be some, some, uh, some, some good wiffle ball for sure. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of which, with uh, absolutely good wiffle ball, and now we have a chance to talk about Division Two stuff, um, which we'll get into right now. Division Two looking pretty interesting um, in terms of when you look at the standings. You know, one team really stands out with it is the you know the OC Seals. They've been really ramping things up this season, and uh, as we'll talk, we'll talk about them pretty soon here um but they're looking like they are going to be the top dog in this in this division um but the first game that we have to talk about is bad news dingers and the 47ers 47ers are holding on to the top spot in the standings um and bad news dingers are looking for some way to get some success going and that's exactly what they do in this first game bad news dingers take this victory over the 47ers six to three yeah, Bad News Dingers going to the sat in that five spot. Uh, and for Division Two, it's going to be the top four teams make it into the playoffs. Um, so the Pacific, the Pacific Thrashers, they do have a shot, but they are, uh, but they also uh, some of the OC of LA, they they have not won a game yet. Uh, so it, it's looking most likely like Pacific Thrashers won't be in there. But uh, but for these teams, one one of, one of these good teams is gonna is gonna not make the playoffs. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see, but but Bad News Dingers able to able to battle back here and, and get a good win against the Forty Seven ers. Both both teams both teams working working on just finding all aspects of the game, get them clicking. Uh, Bad News Dingers able to limit the runs from the Forty Seven ers who have a who, who do have a who do have a pretty good offense. Uh, what, what, what I want, once they get the bats going, you know, they can they can they can get hot at the right time, but. Uh, they keep it to a little roar. Keep come out with a six to three victory here. Absolutely, you you see, you know, the the run differential between these two teams. We've seen the forty ers have this energy of you know having pretty good defense running the ball down. Um, but bad news, Dinkers have more experience in this league than than the a newer team like the forty ers So you obviously see the veteran experience come into play as a part of an aspect here for this team, and. Uh, Props then coming away with a pretty uh, a good victory in a fairly close game, not too too close, but um, they look pretty good. One of the other things that is kind of a other notice for Division Two is that the brothers of Bash are not officially in the Division Two anymore. So um, now there's just six teams in the Division Two. So um, next game on our docket, Pacific Thrashers taking on Woosh. Woosh are looking for uh, another kick for success as well. Thrashers are looking for their first win. Um, they haven't really seen a whole lot of W's on their sheet this this season, um, but Woosh, this game was actually really close. Um, Woosh take a victory six to five over the Pacific Thrashers. Yeah, pretty. I mean, pr- pretty close game right here. Uh, considering the first time uh, that these two play the team t- played, it was the the first the first game of the season for the Pacific Thrashers. Uh, they lost to Woosh. It was thirty four to three. So. So that there's been some improvement there from the from the Thrashers. Uh, Thrashers not able to get onto onto the record and uh, onto the record with a win, unfortunately. But uh, Woosh are keeping themselves in in that playoff hunt. They're in the they came in today as the four seed, and they, they've been missing some guys out there. You know, Owens missed a couple weeks. Donald's missed a couple weeks. So they've had to rely more on more on Nick Yusoff, especially for pitching. Who, who's who's had some who has had some improvement from. Uh, from some of the previous seasons, uh, you know, being on my team, he was he was more the guy that uh, he 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 would just he would just do it too hard at times, uh, and he can get he can get up to the eighties or nineties in terms of uh, in, in terms of speed and things like that. But uh, he's been able to lock things down, keep keep his team in games, and able able to come away with a with a, a very a, maybe a little tighter than what they wanted, but they were able to come away with the victory here. Radio and right so you know for Woosh they're trying to stay within the middle of the pack they're right there on borderline with a couple of these teams obviously bad news dingers is not good news for them um, you know because they're they're fighting for that fourth spot to get into the playoffs as well um, but it's going to be a fight between the Woosh and the bad news dingers throughout this next stretch of games that we see in Division Two so. It'll look pretty interesting with this playoff picture, since you know there's less teams that make it to the playoffs for Division Two than does Division One, uh, typically for that reason. Yeah, yeah, that that two through that the two, three, and four seats could could kind of rotate as we go through these last weeks. The 
OC seals have kind of separated themselves, as we'll talk about them in just a second, uh, in just a little bit. But they've kind of separated themselves from the pack. They they sit two games uh, going into this week. They sat two games above Wiffle D's, and while they and while they take on Wiffle D's later on, we'll talk more about that a little later. And what could be a very important game for Division Two. Uh, but you know, that two through four seed could change a lot. You have fourth teams battle for three seeds. So unfortunately, uh, as we said, one of those teams is not going to make it. Uh, we're just going to have to see uh, who it is. Uh, th- there was some there was some other Division Two news uh, and Division One news released. So we'll talk about it a little later. But uh, it could it could have could be a could be a race to the end for these teams, kind of like it was uh, for the for the final spots of the playoffs this past summer season. So next game that we're going to talk about is uh, Wiffle D's versus Pacific Thrashers. Pacific Thrashers obviously coming off a very tough loss uh, against Woosh in a very close game. This time they have to go through a, another, a tougher opponent in Wiffle D's who uh, are just right up there in the top of the standings behind the OC Seals. Uh, but uh, high scoring game actually, 16-12. to 12. Wiffle D's come away with a good victory here. Yeah, I will say, if I'm not mistaken, at least for that, I will say for that first game, I think they had uh, Drake Hoffman hitting lefty for the Pacific Thrashers. If I'm not mistaken, I think I remember seeing that. But um, you know, so that they, the Pacific Thrashers needs some help getting some guys there. But once again, pretty close here. I mean, Wiffle D's have had a good start uh, this year. Uh, they came into the it came into this week as the two seed at four and two. Uh, but we're able to win a win a the highest well not well the the second highest scoring game of the week, uh, defeating the Pacific Thrashers and maybe not the best sign for Wiffle D's but it's a good sign for Pacific Thrashers. Good to see they're able to put some more runs up and stay in some more games because at this compared to where they were at the start, uh, things were not, things were not looking super good. So uh we'll see what wolf is going to need to win we'll see how they we'll see how they move on uh for their next game uh big uh big game yeah this is the fight between the two big dogs and the uh division two standings between the oc seals and wiffle d's this probably would be a great preview for a world series matchup in division two if we do see this happen um but wiffle d's taking out oc seals and this is actually a very close game between these two teams but oc seals who have been the top dog in this division so far this season, won by a score of one. So they take another win off of their sheet, probably securing themselves in that very top spot of the standings. Yeah, it was a v- v- very close battle between these two teams. They just they just played each other uh, somewhat recently, if I'm not uh, just back in week four. Uh, so the second time they've played each other this month. Uh, this this game this game a little closer though the first uh, the first game Osios came up with a twelve to one victory. Uh, they they took pl- uh, the next matchup took place same uh, same field same time, uh, very close game with us with a six to five victory. First time the Seals haven't scored ten or more runs in a game, uh, but they got the job done when they needed to. The first top two seeds going off against each other. Now the OC Seals sit at eight and one in Division Two. Uh, with the with Wiffle D's now at five and three, uh, two games, uh, two and a half games behind them in in Division Two. Uh, so th- th- maybe that's a World Series matchup we see. But with these with these top five teams, you could you could, you could see any combination of those. Who knows what could happen with the OC Seals? And, and some people have said that the OC Seals could be a Division One team. I'll uh, I'll put I'll put some I'll put some information out there so people know. Uh, the the official ruling is if if you win if if you ha- win uh, team teams could switch in between division one and division two if they want to for the winter season you know say, say like say like a team like the OCCs wants to uh, wants to make the jump they could uh, if a team in division two does win two World Series uh, then then they will be bumped up no matter what to division one uh, so say like the OCCs were able to win back to back division two championships in the fall and winter. In the springtime, they will be able to move up to the. Uh, they, I mean, they will be pushed up into Division One, uh, but they, you know, like, like a team like the OC Wolves of LA, if they wanted to mix things around, they could be they could be in Division Two next season. But the, but they're not going to be forced in there just because they're last place in Division One. So that's some info for that. But OC Seals uh, right, right now, you know, they've they're on they're on a they're on a seven game win streak right now, looking to keep looking to keep that up. 
Right, exactly. So the OCC has a lot of really good talent, as we've talked about so many different times this season. Um, you know, they've, they're headed by that man and Ryan Lavelle. They've got these baseball prospects. But um, they've openly expressed that they uh, are thinking about, you know, sticking with Division Two because a lot of that talent will be moving on to university to participate in the baseball season in the springtime. So it, it's something that we have to keep an eye out for, you know, depending on which... Um, if they decide to go to Division One and try that out in the winter time, or if they just decide to stick with Division Two, but right now they're looking pretty good in Division Two. Um, they're playing nearly lights out. Obviously, this game was really close between Wiffle D's and and OC Seal, but Wiffle D's starting to show signs of of the competitiveness in Division Two with the a top team like the OC Seals. Like you said, the last matchup, twelve to one. This time, six to five, keeping it very close. So they do have a chance to make things interesting if we get to playoff times. Yeah, you, you just you keep a game close. You always give yourself a chance to win. Uh, we, we saw it earlier with the other Wolves of OC earlier. They keep a, keep a game close, and you nearly defeat an undefeated team uh, who hasn't lost a regular season game since the spring of 2023. So uh, you just keep you just keep if you're Wolves easy. You just think, hey, we're right there. We, we could be, we could do this once it comes to playoff time. Uh, and you know, we, we saw that with the other Wolves we'll see in the spring season. They lost to the MS Warriors, ended up as a number one seed, nearly undefeated, and the other Wolves we'll see took them down two times in a row to get to the World Series. Uh, so it could be it, that we could, it's, it's, it's always a possibility we could be seeing, seeing something similar here. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that we just have to keep an eye out for. Well, Division 2 has finally concluded with uh, the breakdown here. Now we can move on to the Purple League. Just got two games on the sheet. Um, obviously, Purple League is kind of that fun league. Um, but this time, not lopsided matchups here. We got some matchups that um, l- look like they're here for you know some competitiveness in these games. And that's Wiffle Doze and uh, the Pancake Batters. Both of these teams walk in here with a one win, four loss, and one tied record between the two. Um, this game, Wiffle Doze takes the victory 6-3 against the Pancake Batters, which uh, kind of seals that place uh, where they are in the standings, third and fourth, respectively. Yeah, I mean, uh, especially compared to the other uh, Purple League game, this is a much lo- lower scoring game. Uh, I mean, both both teams do have some good play- some good players on there, and a good, and a good mix of stuff makes it Makes it, makes it a close battle between these teams. There's not been a whole, there have not really been any blowouts in, in the Purple League, which is always good to see. You don't want to see one team just racking up the score on the on the other just unfairly. So, uh, pretty pretty close. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised Wiffle, Wiffle does do have that low of a record. But you know, at the end of, at the end of the day, it's not all about it's not uh, as much about the record in in the purple league. So uh, as long as long as people are enjoying it. Yeah, right. And that's you know the whole theme of it is just to have fun. Uh, nothing too serious. Nothing too crazy in terms of competitiveness. Um, we take a look at the next game, which is between the Glizzy Gladiators and the Sheeps. Both teams are 4-1 and one, uh, prior to this game. Glizzy Gladiators, you can check out that video um, up on YouTube if you want to check that out with uh, Joey Ponder commentating. Um, or if you don't. Or if you don't. That's totally fine. Uh, Glizzy Gladiators take the victory 21-17 to 17 over the Sheeps. Uh, Glizzy Gladiators put themselves in a first place spot in the division rankings yeah i guess they're much different to the to the first game a lot of offense going on here i mean one team you have joey ponder and kyle Froome. the other team you have anthony agrusa and matt hornage so a lot of runs a lot of runs will be scored but the supporting players have been great for each team uh we can get some highlights of the supporting players with the glizzy gladiators with their uh with them live streaming the games each week so you get to hear some more about people like uh, benny the jet rodriguez and stuff like that uh, so, so j- 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 just just some just some fun to have. But uh, I believe for Purple League, if I'm not mistaken, the top three teams make it to playoffs, uh, with the first seed automatically getting into the World Series, and then the second and third place teams have to play each other to get into the uh, into the playoffs officially. So, uh, I mean, to get into the World Series, I should say. So, uh, right, right, right now, goes the Gladiators putting themselves on top. And we'll see what happens with the rest of this. Certainly, certainly, yeah. And 
and which is it's, i mean it's a fun league right but i'm sure like as you saw with the glizzy gladiators and the sheeps it was a very close very fun high scoring game probably something fun to just kind of watch and just sit back you know relax and have a good time um but yeah that's just something that we have to keep an eye on yeah it's one of those i'm sure no one wants to lose but i mean, I mean for, for guys like joey and anthony and stuff it'll be their first world series title even though it's not uh, like the, the main one i mean it's it would be the the purple league world series so uh I'm, I'm i'm sure those guys would want it i don't know if we give out participation trophies for that uh anyways um that's the end of our week six breakdown here um uh, we talked about all of these teams in standings obviously their standings as we're recording this haven't been updated yet but eventually they will be um so keep an eye on that, uh, an eye out on that for orange county wiffle ball um but that's it for OC football content right now. Um, but we want to talk about a little bit, little story uh, from yet from the a day ago as this is being recorded. Uh, there was a last summer tournament for the SoCal football uh, league that was being hosted up in Fullerton. Um, OC Wiffleball sent a team with the Elizabeth OC and Jordan Drexler, Bill Menji, myself, and Ethan Lee. Uh, came out there for the tournament with Stephen Hayden participating with the SoCal team, uh, part of those guys who are going up to the York, Pennsylvania tournament. So, guys like Good Dustin Skaggs, EJ, and uh, Rabbit, and then Stephen, obviously. So, they were part of a separate team of guys on there. And then, former OC football players as well. We had Mitchell Downing. Mitchell Downing and PJ Gordon were part of a different team that um, we'll talk about here in just a second, but. Let me talk to you, Stephen. Um, how were you, what were your thoughts about this tournament? What did you see, and uh, can you give us like a little bit of a summary? Yeah. So the the you know the past thirty six hours have been very involved with. Uh, I've been very very hectic with wiffle ball and things like that. So uh, so starting off on Friday night, uh, starting off around three thirty or so, uh, I got to we uh, SoCal football was doing a, a was was uh, running some. Uh, the the league out there at the Fullerton Sports Complex, they were doing a Tommy Lasorda Day. So they had a, had a bunch of a, had a bunch of different events going on. They had some like carnival type stuff, like uh, bouncy houses, uh, different carnival games going on. I like, got a soccer field on one field. They had some like high schools playing uh, like the Savannah Banana Rules, I think. Uh, something something along those lines. Had other stuff going on other fields, and then we had a field in which. Uh, for for about an hour or so, we had. Uh, believe, believe the kids were around nine, ten years old. We had four different teams, uh, like, kind of playing against each other, uh, testing out wiffle ball to see how they like it. Uh, had that going on for a little while, and then after at the, uh, the night time around like seven o'clock or so, uh, we had a live series being played uh, between the uh, Dustin's Panthers, uh, Dustin who is on the LA Wiffles of OC. And then PJ Gordon and, and the Llamas were playing. They were, those two were playing against each other, uh, and when, when that one was going on, so that, that that's what we were doing Friday nights. Uh, I, I I didn't get home till like ten o'clock or so, like to like ten ten fifteen, and then I was up right away at five five thirty on on Saturday morning, uh, going back out to Fullerton, about a couple minutes away from where we were the previous night. Uh, I went there to help. So I went there. To, uh, Dustin and I got everything set up. I got all the lines down, put the fences up, uh, got everything up like that. So, um, excuse me. Uh, so, and then on 7:45, teams started showing up. We had a, uh, we had we had another tournament out there. Eight teams out there, uh, including me playing with the SoCal guys. Uh, the four of us will be going out to Arizona also in about a month. Uh, it'll be at that is uh, October 21st. Uh, we'll be going to the BLW uh, tournament out there, uh, which we held in a minor league stadium, which uh, these those guys went to last year. Uh, it sounds like guys like Jordan Robles will be out there. Uh, I'll be playing against them and stuff like that. But uh, but for but for yesterday we had, uh, and then also we had the, uh, as Justin mentioned we had four of the other Wilson OC guys out there. Uh, for for SoCal for us we start we had we had a good start we. Our pool play, we, we had two wins and a loss. We had two wins and a, and a draw, I should say, and up being a two C. And then I'll let Justin talk more about kind of how, how what his thoughts were on the day, uh, like through pool play and through their first elimination game and stuff like that. Kind of a 
last minute thing. I, I didn't know if you were going to be there for sure, but uh, kind of a last minute thing. Just just go for it. Well, my impression was that you know I wasn't going to be able to make it because of uh, the other event that I had going on that day, um, but kind of had to just because there's only one car available at my house so had to go with ethan either way because he mentioned that he was going out there i said all right that's totally fine um found out that it was um dylan menji not not dylan hoffman and so they were thinking like oh man no he's in minnesota (laughs) yeah enjoying a football game um and uh the impression was that dylan might pitch and i was like oh that's great um let's uh i'll think about it so saturday came up said all right let's do it drove up to fullerton uh had our guys with jordan dylan ethan uh and myself and our pressure was like uh the three of us jordan ethan and i would pitch uh in those pool play games uh came out to the first one didn't have any expectations because we weren't thinking like we weren't gonna win a whole bunch of these games um but unfortunately we didn't win any games actually um we fell to, uh, you know, the eventual team that will win the whole tournament. We fell to um, the SoCal team with Stephen Hayden, and then we was lost to the uh, the team with the Outlaws. But there were some really good signs of um, some flashes in some of those games. Like, for example, Jordan looked really good that first game, uh, just pitching in there. Um, and then the second game, I we threw myself in there, um, actually struck out two guys and then struck out a third guy after giving up three runs which was a uh, which is pretty interesting uh i think i got some eyes open there and then ethan also had uh, uh an outing where he you know pitched uh, a full inning and didn't allow any runners on base uh, unfortunately didn't wasn't able to key in or lock in when it came to playing against the socal team for the most part kind of playing himself because he's laughing a little too much um, that's just something we have to make sure we got to clean up with him because obviously he's just playing in his own brain and then um jordan struggled in that first um uh, pool in that game um for the tournament and uh did not could not come back from that whatsoever um came came away with a lot of frustration um because he wasn't pitching successfully as he felt like he should um then bats were there were some bats going but you know Dilmenji is just the first time experiencing a, a faster pitch like that and a lot more dirtier pitches with the scuff balls and then Ethan obviously hasn't been out there as often as well uh, a different aspect with the base running uh, in that itself and then uh, you know it was just it, I mean we were just there for fun I, I don't think we had, had any expectations of just like trying to win the whole thing it was just more like more so like let's just have fun out here let's just uh get some reps in and uh use that to help us prepare for tuesday nights so that was the kind yeah. of impression yeah you, you see some faster pitching maybe uh when you come back you'll you'll be able to, i know and, and then for me like i'm going from between socal back to oc i've had some i've had some a lot of success in oc because i'm used to seeing the faster pitching and then i'm able to just time it up correctly and things like that. So I, I hope both of you guys will be, I'll be, I'll be able to translate over. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's game, game two goes around. I'm, I'm, our team's got a break. Uh, and, and, and Justin's just dotting up the first two guys. The first two guys I see, the uh, first guy he struck around on three pitches, uh, got him to chase like an inside curveball type pitch. Uh, second guy, second guy he struck him out on three pitches, and I think, got, I think he got him looking as well. Uh, so I was, <laughs> I was in, sh- I was in shock when I was looking at that. I was, because uh, I mean, you're, you're our number, like our number five pitcher on our on our team for on the other Wolfsville C team. We have the, see, so, see so you do that. Sh- it showed some good signs, you know. Can see uh, shows, uh, shows the depth of our pitching. The fact that you're our, our fifth pitcher, uh, <laughs> things like that. So, I uh, did stru- did struggle a little bit after afterwards. Gave up, a, you know, up a few runs, but uh, one of, a couple of those were was a defensive uh, mishap that scored two runs. So, and that was against the the team that ended up being the number one seed through the pool play still. So, uh, I, we, I appreciate you having guys out there without without I mean without that team. It was kind of organized last minute. I was trying to ask a bunch of different guys to see if they're available, but without that last team, that tournament would not have happened. So. Mm. 
uh, we, 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 we need, we needed aid. You guys were literally the eighth team. So we, we appreciate you guys coming out there, uh, and playing, getting, giving, giving it a try. I know it's a little, I know it's a little different without me there. That, that was, it was definitely weird for me not being with you guys, but, uh, well, hopefully you guys at least had a, had a decent time. You were able to get out at a, at a good hour to go with your, uh, go do your other commitments and things like that. Yeah, it was fun, you know, just being out there, just I just did like this circumstance, like you guys are preparing for the Penn York Penn tournament, so this was a good chance to kind of get some extra experience. Even though you guys aren't base running uh, whatsoever, but seeing some of the games that you guys are playing, um, there were, there was a few of them that were extremely interesting. Um, I guess you're gonna tell us more about that. Yeah, you know, and and who who knows, we we may be teaming up again for. Uh, uh, for for the, the Dustin's December thirty first uh, December thirtieth tournaments, uh, that might get me getting announced here soon because he'll have a he'll, just like last year he'll have a tournament at the end of the year, uh, whether it be at uh, at the same park Hermosa Park, whether it be at a different park. That's a uh, <laughs> that that could be interesting. I, he's been there's been some talk about possibly finding an, uh, a bigger venue, so that could be a possibility for Dustin in the ne in the next tournament. So. Maybe we'll team up again, or maybe, or maybe he wants to have us have, have the four of us that ran it uh, uh, this past Saturday. Dude, again, we'll see. But uh, for, for for my team, it was uh, it was me. It was Dustin Staggs. It was Ethan Johnson. It was Cannon Rabbit. Uh, those were four. Uh, as I as I said, we had two wins and a loss, uh, including we actually we, we got to play uh, our two teams got to play each other. Uh, I think we won that uh, five one. I believe it was five one. Uh, we <laughs> what could have been the last pitch of the game. Jordan did hit a home run uh, to center field uh, for for you guys is one and only hit and one and only run of the game. But um, you guys had some you guys had some good contact, some very unlucky contact. I think you put the ball in twice, been played twice, and one of them one of them just happened to go right to dust, and the other one just was like a, a like almost kind of rose off the ground and was uh, was caught, but. That's, that's the way it works sometimes. Uh, we were the two seed. You guys were the eight seed. Yeah, and you lost. You lost your elimination in ten to one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, ten to one in that game. The catch that was made by Ethan uh, Johnston. Oh my god, that thing trailed like a like a rising pitch, and it just stayed up in the air. And I was like, I think it was gonna go between his legs, and he just dropped his arms down and caught it. And I was like, great, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and then that's and that's when you had the the, the wind was blowing uh, away. I'm oh, sorry. And you, you had the you had the wind blow, uh, blowing with you, so the ball was just kind of stayed up a little bit. Uh, another situation, one of my other games where I hit a ball kind of similar to that, but a little higher, and then it just died on the other field because the wind was blowing against me. Uh, so I so said it's just one of those things that just happens, <laughs> just unlucky. Uh, but then you guys, you guys got to elimination game. If I'm not mistaken, you guys lost ten to one or something like that. Right. Yeah. Ten. Ten to one. Ten to one. I think, I think, yeah, I think, like, top of the first inning, Dylan had a, had an RBI single to bring in a run, and then, uh, p p pitching, pitching wise, things didn't go, things didn't go the best for you, but uh, I hope you guys at least had fun, enjoyed it, and you guys get to experience what it's like to play without me for a day, so, yeah. uh, you, pr you probably enjoy that a lot more, I'd guess, not having me around. <laughs> I mean, not really. It would have been nice to win a few <laughs> games, right? Um, but, it's normal, right? I mean, but it seems like you guys were uh, a well-oiled machine over there. I mean, the first game um, in the tournament play, it looked like, uh, you know, there was two runs you guys had up on the other team. Then you gave up a two-run home run and then came away with a walk-off, yeah. if I'm right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk about that uh, right here, uh, kind of how our path looked. You, 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 left, you left afterwards. Yeah. Uh, after your game was over, because you had to go, but uh, we finished two and one. We were the two seed. Our first elimination game was against the seven seed uh, team we had beaten earlier in the day. Um, uh, we're, we're up. To, we're up two zero, and um, I'm pretty certain the guy we were. It's this is a seventy two mile hour speed limit, by the way. Uh, but uh, I got. It, it seemed like he was throwing a little fast, and I got the radar gun out, and I'm pretty sure. Uh, he was like, like the lowest he was throwing was like seventy eight, uh, getting up to eighty one sometimes, and so I was like, we were kind of thought my, my radar gun was a little off, but then I threw a warm up pitch and it came in at sixty two, 
Uh, so I, I, my, my, I would genuinely believe we were facing about 78 to 81, kind of just letting it go because we weren't totally sure. And plus, we were up at that point anyways. Uh, so I, I'm pitching the last inning. Uh, I, 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 get, I had one walk earlier, had two, I had two outs, two strikes. I, I threw a pitch. I was going to hit the bottom bar of the zone. They took it to center field for a home run. It's like okay, here we here we go again. It's like that's the first first hit I've given up, and actually ended up being the only hit I gave up the whole day, um, as, a, as while I was pitching. Uh, but then, but then, uh, but we still at the bottom of the third inning since we were the higher seed. Uh, we we got the bases we got the bases loaded, one out, uh, and I, I I'm pretty sure it was a knuckleball that was thrown to me. Uh, with uh, hit, hit a knuckleball, I hit it to center field, kind of tailed to right, but it uh, went over the fence. Ended up winning that first game six to two. Uh, then we had a little little break wait for our next game. Uh, we play a, played a two man team uh, with a guy who's a, a big reserve player in the league. Uh, I, I started that game. I pitched my two innings. Uh, one, I believe I had five strikeouts, including there was one, there was one really good play from Dustin on the first on the first pitch of the game. I uh, like like dove across towards second base, flipped it to. I flipped it to first for the first out of the for the first out of the first inning. So it's like okay, I got we got away with one there, and then uh, I was able to. I had some I had a few walks in there, and some I had some pitches that were just missing all day, uh, but was able to not allow any runs. And right away in the first inning, um, I uh, we, we, I I got out my first time. I, I popped up, I believe. Uh, then uh, Cannon Rabbit hit a solo home run. We then got two walks, and I hit a three-run home run to make it a four-to-zero ball game in the in the first inning, and then th- and then things were good from there. We ended up scoring a couple more runs, win that one six-zero to make it to the final. Uh, on the on the other side, uh, you had you had a rematch from the last from the last tournaments. Uh, PJ and Gordon and his team uh, called three of a uh, called three of a kind. They were taking on the Long Beach Whiffs team, who uh, Dustin and I defeated in the final of the last tournament. Uh, PJ's team took that one, and then they went on to play the Outlaws. Uh, won that one relatively handily, I think, something like six, six one or six zero, something along those lines. So I ended up being uh, was, uh, was P, uh, PJ and Mitchell and their team versus uh, my team. Uh, we gave we gave the ball to Cannon. He's kind of the uh, he's unfortunately not going to York, but. Uh, he found he's got he's got other commitments with baseball and things like that. Uh, but he, he's kind of, he's he, he's kind of our guy. We're going to try to let try to say try to save him for later in the day, especially with BOW and kind of let because that that lefty angle is very difficult to see. Uh, that left he's got a very good lefty screwball on him. So uh, try to and then I I can I can throw a lot more innings. So I kind of let me go like earlier in the day. Uh, or, or like the like earlier elimination games and try to save Cannon for later, but uh, we get to the final. Cannon starts. Uh, PJ gets a first bat of the bat, first bat of the game. PJ sending it's it's a solo home run to center field, and we're already down one zero. Uh, Cannon, uh, there, there's one base hit and a and a walk, and then later on, uh, Mitchell Downing hits a three run homer in the first inning. It's like okay, we're it's, it's not a, it's not a great start to the game. Uh, and PJ's just mowing us down on, on the mound. I think we might have had well like a walk or two, but uh, I struck out. I struck out twice in both my at bats. I just, I, I, I just, I just can't hit PJ for whatever reason. He's the one guy I just struggle to hit against. Even an OC with block, I couldn't hit him. I think I had one hit against him in three games played. Um, and and then P, PJ also tacks on. I believe he tacked on a two run homer in the second inning to make it six to zero. And so now, and so, and so we go we go into the bo- uh, we go into the t- top of the third, still six zero to game. I come in the pitch, I I walk Mitchell my first at bat, and then I proceed to to strike out PJ Mitchell and their other guy Trent Lyle uh, in a row. I was able to get the, get them out, uh, so I, I did I did a good job in the third inning, keeping us in the game. Uh, and then Mitchell Downing comes to comes to the mound to close it off. Uh, who if, if you haven't seen Mitchell pitch much before. He's not—he's not the hardest thrower. Uh, I think he—he he was throwing some strikes at 38 miles an hour. Uh, so it was, it was just—it was just about timing that all up and being able to get on base. You know, with chasing ch- chasing six is something we, we could come back uh, from with with Mitchell pitching. Um, we, we were able to get base runners on uh, through through some walks. 
Uh, my, my first at bat, I had I had a like a one hopper to the fence in left field, and I slipped out of the box, and, met, and once once again, my knee is still a little bit messed up, and I ended up messing it up a little more. Uh, I could I was struggling to walk. I was struggling to walk after that, but was able to. Uh, but I, I stayed in the game, um, <laughs> which was needed later on. But uh, we ended up scoring. We ended up scoring one run. Dustin got. I caught in the middle of two bases and tried to go home and got uh, got pegged. That's how they got their first out. So it's six uh, one with one out, bases loaded. I come back up to the play my first at bat, bat since I got hurt. I had a one two count on me. I had like a uh, inside pitch thrown to me. I just I just got my hands out there quick, took it to the left field for a grand slam. Uh, so we ended up making it a six to five ball game. Uh, just. Trying to get us back into it, so we got six five, six to five, one out, um, and then um, uh, Cannon, who's up next, uh, hits a hard ground ball to the right side. Unfortunately, uh, is not, the out is made at first, and then Ethan Johnson comes uh, comes up to the play with two outs with a chance to tie it up or at least get on base. Uh, ends up ends up tipping one into the zone for strike three, and and that's how PJ and Mitchell and their team they end up winning. This tournament, uh, first tournament this summer, Dustin has actually lost, uh, and then and then first time I made it to the final and lost. So, uh, un- un- unfortunate result, unfortunate result for us. But it wasn't a horrible game. There were just some mistakes we made that kind of that kind of led us to <laughs> to to, uh, to to lose that one and, and just not off to a great start with that, giving up giving up three home runs uh, there. So. Uh, I, I had a pretty good day overall. I homered in all of our elimination games, but uh, just not enough to get the final, the final victory. Sounds like, uh, I mean, kept it close, which is a good deal. And uh, obviously, you know, mistakes are just something that changes the game, the way, uh, you know, the outcome of a game goes. And that's just unfortunately how things happen. Um, but you guys have about, you know, a few weeks before the York, Pennsylvania trip comes aboard. But you know, this is, this is just another practice thing and just, you know, just to have fun, too. Yeah, the, the, so, so the next podcast, we'll be talking more about about the about the uh, York Pennsylvania team and kind of a trip out there, because that'll be first time for a lot of us going out there and uh, me representing SoCal with Ball and OC with Ball out there will be will be fun. So uh, we'll talk we'll talk more about that next time uh, on the pot on the podcast. And then after that, we'll talk about uh there could be a time where I'm not in the podcast and someone else could be joining. So, uh, uh, but, and once I, once I come back, we'll talk. We'll t- go more in depth about that. Kind of give you guys my experience with that because I think it's going to be a very fun weekend. But uh, looking forward to that. And it, was, it was some good. It was some good. It was some good practice for us uh, to be able to get to get, be able to get ready for uh, just to, just to be around each other more, get the chemistry up, and uh, be able to get a better understanding of, of who we are, what kind of put what what bus- what buttons to push and things like that. So. Uh, I, th- I think I think it was good for us. I mean, we've only really lost two games, and they were both finals. So, uh, oh, right, actually, I guess we lost once to the Cajuns in the pool play. We already want to know at that point. So, uh, overall, 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 I think it was I think it was a good time out there Saturday. I appreciate you know, appreciate you guys for coming out there and making making that tournament possible. Certainly, certainly, yeah. And then I guess we'll talk about that a little bit more. But unless you got anything else to talk about, think go. Uh, we can close out this episode and get ready for uh, week seven of of OC Wiffle Ball and everything else that goes. Yeah, some good matchups coming up for this week. You know, the the two LA teams play each other. The LA Wolves of OC and the OC Wolves of LA will play each other again right at six twenty. Uh, so if you're there, that could be something to watch right on the dirt field. Uh, other other than that, I, I think we're about I think we're about good here. So uh, just keep keep tuning in. We'll, we're right. We're getting close to that playoff push, so it's almost that time again. And no said truer than than what you have spoken there. Um, but yes, a lot of things going on. Keep a track on the standings and make sure you s- look at all the stats and all the media that's coming out with OC Wiffle Ball. A lot of stuff is happening right now. Um, but yeah, we'll keep you guys updated. See you guys in the next episode. Um, make sure you guys are following the official OC Wiffle Ball Instagram. Uh, check out Hunky Door Sports Show Instagram as well for all the newest updates on everything. And make sure you guys subscribe and like down below. Um, but this has been Justin Lee and Stephen Hayden signing off for now. See you guys in episode 25 of That Scuffed Up. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. We'll see you guys later.